Okay, Costa Rica is amazing. It is a beautiful little country. It's tiny. It's like the third of the size of Utah, yet it takes three times as long to get anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, I, I had bus rides from my areas to get into San Jose that would take five or six hours, like just horrendous. Because of the infrastructure, like the highway systems and the roads they have, it just takes forever to get anywhere um, distance wise. Uh, within the cities, uh, if you're in the big city, you'll take buses everywhere. Costa Rica is really interesting too. So as I had said before, it's a really small country, but in that small country, there's a whole bunch of different climate. So it's like they usually just have like summer and rainy season. And when it rains, it rains like none other. It's so crazy. Like I got, I can't even tell you how many times I got soaked. <laughs> um, and my umbrellas broke. Like I had to buy, I don't know, maybe five or six umbrellas on my mission just because it rained so much and it was windy and my umbrellas were breaking all the time. Uh, but I wouldn't trade those memories for anything. Like as frustrating as it was, it was just like made my mission so much fun, more fun. There's parts of Costa Rica that are really hot and dry, um, like in Guanacaste. So, and then there's areas in San Jose that are colder, like Cartago is really cold. And then there's areas where it's just like mild climate, a little bit of humidity. And then there's other places that are just hot and humid and miserable. So you really get a little bit of everything in one tiny country. And then there's really cool animals. Um, depending on where you're at in the country, uh, you may see a sloth, which is really hard to come by. There's beautiful birds, crocodiles, iguanas. I mean, these, there's, there's a lot of exotic animals. It just really depends on where you're at as to whether you're going to see them or not. Food is good. It's not spicy, which sometimes I disliked because I love spicy food and a lot of their food is just very... Just like natural flavors, they don't add a lot of spice to their things, um, but you will eat rice and beans every day. <laughs> and they have something that's called pinto, which is like their own version of a mixed rice and beans. Um, and they eat lots of salsa lisano, which is also really good. They put that into their pinto. Um, and natilla. Natilla is huge. It's like a staple for them. It's like their version of sour cream. Basically, you'll eat just a lot of uh, what's called casadas, and it's just a plate of like the rice and beans or pinto, fried plantains, platanos, and then like some sort of meat, usually like chicken or pork, and then like a little side salad. And their salads consist of tomato and cucumber or cabbage. <laughs> and everything has um, lime and salt on it. Everything, all the time. Uh, another great thing is they always make fresh juices uh, out of the fruit there, which is so great. I loved it, and I, that's something I miss immensely about Costa Rica is having fresh juice every day. Um, the tropical fruits down there are amazing. I had mentioned pinto. That's a huge food. They will eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, that is the food you will eat for your time in Costa Rica. Because they don't have a ton of typical meals, um, but something that is typical of there is something called chifrijo, which is rice, white rice, and then either black or pinto beans, but it's a little bit more soupy. They leave the liquid in it, and then they top it with um, chicharron, which is fried pork skin, and avocado and pico, and you eat it with tortilla chips. And that was like my most favorite meal in Costa Rica. I loved it so much. Their version of convenience stores um, are called pulperias, and they're on every corner. Like, you will walk by 700 pulperias a day. Like, <laughs> we would stop at a pulperia like once or twice a day throughout in between our visits because we were hungry, we wanted a snack, and so we would grab like plantain chips or little candies or something. Um, everything's really cheap. And yeah, I ate plantain chips all the time too. My most favorite were the plantain chips with um, limon y sal. Uh, lime and salt fla like flavoring on it and I eat those probably almost every day. <laughs> Costa Rica also is pretty good about the type of food they eat so they don't typically eat really strange foods like a lot of other Latin countries do. However, there was one time I ate pig's feet. Actually, I ate it twice. In my first area there was a lady who made it a lot and uh, it wasn't my most favorite thing to eat, but <laughs> it was okay. 
I, I ate it to be nice and it just was an interesting texture and it's just it's just the pig's foot like <laughs> you just eat the meat right off the bone um, there were people too I had heard that would uh, sometimes eat chicken feet that freaks me out a little bit but they would eat it they eat sopa de mondongo which is made out of like I think it was I think it was cow brains or cow something. I can't remember. Something from the cow. Mosquito bites. I got them all the time. Um, so insect repellent is a very wise thing to have. So housing in Costa Rica is actually pretty nice. Um, it depends on where you're at. I remember my first area, uh, we stayed in, in kind of a dinky house. It was really dusty and there were cockroaches everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's just kind of common anywhere you go, any part, of, even if you live in a really nice house, like cockroaches are just bound to get into your homes. Basically everywhere you live is gated, like anyone, anyone in Costa Rica, all of their houses have what's called a portón or like a gate. Most houses don't have doorbells, so you either go to the door and knock, but something that's actually more common and more like culturally acceptable for them is you yell out, upe. So there's like different rumors about where Upe came from, but I think the most common that I heard was that Upe was the La like the Costa Ricans um, trying to say open in English. And so Upe, you yell out Upe, like Upe buenas, and you yell that at someone's door instead of knocking so that they know that someone's there and then they come open the door. So that was like something to have to get used to. And then it was hard coming home and not saying that when I go to someone's house. Costa Rica is an actually pretty expensive country. It's the most expensive in all of Central America. And it's okay for like Americans because we, we have more money or we make more money than what they do. So rent for a home, like an entire house is probably the equivalent of, you know, three or $400 rent for an entire house. And for us, that's really cheap. But for them, they don't make very much money. And so food is about the same price as what we pay here or sometimes more expensive, but they make less money than we do. So it's really an interesting dynamic to see that, um, you know, they're working jobs that we have here in the States, but they make way less money than we do. I remember there's a surge, uh, one of my member friends from my second area, he's a surgeon, like he, well, he assists with animal surgery, which something here would be like, you would make a really good amount of money, but for him, he like makes barely just enough to provide for his family. So it's interesting to see that living, like housing and food and work dynamic there. There's a lot of people who come from Nicaragua to co live in Costa Rica and work because they, Nicaragua is even more in of like a, a work crisis than Costa Rica is. So there's a lot of them who come. And so going into Costa Rica, more likely than not, especially in um, San Jose and everything up, um, there's a lot of people who are from Nicaragua that um, are there trying to work. And then in the East Mission, there's a lot of indigenous people um, because they come from Panama. And right on that border is where there's a lot of indigenous tribes. And so there's a lot of people who are there. And the main source of work for them is picking coffee beans. Um, it's a really tedious job, but it's something that they can do because a lot of them are not literate in Spanish or they speak very little. And so that's, you know, the only work that they can do. Um, so they are like working in the fields or getting coffee beans. Coffee is a huge thing in Costa Rica, like huge. Oh yeah, so Costa Rica is a pretty safe country, um, safer than most in Central America. There, I mean, you do have to have precaution. There are, you know, some dangerous parts, but um, generally speaking, Costa Rica is very safe. Places to go, things to do. Costa Rica is known for its beaches. There's volcanoes. There's some like other national parks or hikes that are really beautiful. Um, you can go on. Again, just depending on what part of Costa Rica you're in is what locals do. In San Jose, there's more like museums and um, like little theme parks for kids. And then as you get further out into the other areas, there's more natural things you can go do. So go see the volcanoes or go on a hike. But anywhere you go, there's, there's always something fun or something beautiful to go see. All of my companions seem to have a fear of something. 
So my first companion was afraid of dogs. My next one, cats. The next one, bugs. The next one, I can't remember. So they, And then my last companion was afraid of frogs. And there were frogs all over my last area. Like, and especially at night, you would hear them croaking. And she hated it. Like, would jump and scream and hold on to me because she just hated them. So we're getting home one night. <laughs> and there is a frog sitting outside our door like our house door, and she just screams, and she's like, Edmana, like, I'm not going inside, I won't, like, I can't, I'm like, we have to go inside, like, it's time for us to be home, and she's like, I'm not going, it's like, I can't, I won't, like, I can't do it, because it was sitting, like, right, like, the door, and just, like, right there, and so we lived next to the elders, we call the elders, like, where are you, and they were coming and they were, she, we were like, we need your help. We need to get rid of this frog. How the house was set up was there was a, it was like an apartment building. So it was the door and then we had to walk upstairs and then the actual door to get into our apartment. Um, but it was like a private door. No one else could get in there. So the, they, the elders were actually with the branch president. And so he was there with that. He took them home and um, they're helping us get rid of this frog and the frog starts hopping around. And as soon as we open the door, the frog hops in and like is hopping up the stairs. <laughs> and my companion is like on the verge of tears because she's like, I can't go in there. I'm not gonna be able to sleep. And it's just hopping up and we couldn't get it out. And eventually the branch president like was able to catch it and like get it out down the stairs and out back into nature. But it just was so funny. Just It would have been funny in and of itself because it's a frog, like, just hopping up our stairs. But the fact that she was so afraid of the frog just made it 20 times more funny. In April is Semana Santa. Um, so, like, when we're here celebrating Easter, they have Semana Santa. And they always have... Um, a huge parade and a procession and they have events going on every day throughout the whole week. Uh, sometimes it's fun to watch and sometimes it's a little overwhelming, but it's definitely a huge cultural thing for them to celebrate Semana Santa. And then in um, September 18th is their Independence Day. And actually a lot of countries in Central America and Mexico celebrate this day as an, of independence. Um, and so there's always a huge festival, um, schools put on parades, everyone dresses up. Costa Rica's colors are red, white, and blue, or, you know, very similar to a lot of countries. And um, they have a typical dress that they wear just for this holiday. There's not really, like, typical clothing that's um, kind of like Guatemala or Peru where they have patterns or colors or types of clothing that's very typical for them. Costa Rica doesn't really have that. Um, but for this holiday, they do, they have, the women wear this white dress that has like a big, I don't know what to call it, but basically just like drapes over right here. And then they have ribbon going across the dress that are red and blue. Um, and then men wear like a hat and they have like this other, like a white shirt that has the red and blue designs on it. Um, very fun to see. Um, the locals participating in those events. And then Christmas, they also are really big with um, doing parades and festivals and celebrations for that as well. So in Costa Rica, and this is with uh, Latin people in general, but uh, people in Costa Rica are very friendly. They will offer you what they have, even if it's not much, even if it's a glass of juice. If that's all they have in their home, like you will drink a glass of juice before you leave their house <laughs> and they're very uh, generous when it comes to that and they have a saying um, they'd say si Dios quiere or if God wants so they call themselves ticos or ticas so ticos for men and ticas for women so you'll hear that a lot and soccer is a huge thing in Costa Rica as well so they have three major soccer teams um, La Liga, Saprisa and Heredia, like you are either Liguista or Saprisista, and like that is just how it is. Um, so you'll hear a lot of that in Costa Rica as well. Very straight up people, so if there's something you don't like or something that's bothering you or if they feed you something and you don't like it or you can't eat it for whatever reason, like be polite about it, but just 
tell them like, hey, I can't eat this or, you know, I don't really like this. They just, they prefer honesty instead of you, you trying to beat around the bush, which is sometimes really hard because we do that a lot here. The Latin culture is giving kisses on the cheek. And then you also, when you enter a home or when you leave a home, you have to greet and say goodbye to every single person. So it may take you an additional five minutes to leave the house, um, but just that's how it is. You culturally acceptable and expected to go and say goodbye to every single person. Or when you get to a house, you know, give them a, a kiss on the cheek or shake their hand and do that to every single person as you get there. And then do it again to every single person as you leave the house. And if you don't, they understand because it is a cultural thing, but because you are there and you're living there and want to be respectful of their culture, it's something important for you to do. So Spanish in Costa Rica is actually really good. Um, generally speaking, they speak very clearly um, and some speak quicker than others, but I mean, that's kind of how you, you are anywhere you go. So there are some words that Costa Rica uses um, that are just, you know, words. So for cool, they say the word tuanis. So like, ay, que tuanis, meaning like, oh, how cool. Their word for dude is my. They spell M-A-E. Que tal, my? And they don't all speak like this, but you'll find the rare tico that does. So normally in Spanish with the, like the double R, you roll it. Rrr, like carro. But, or tres. Like they have that little bit of roll to the R. Um, there's some of them that say it like a hard R like we do in English. So they'll say carro or trace or, um, I, I don't know. Yeah, so they, they, they use that hard R, which is like throws you off because you're learning that you have to roll the R. And then all of a sudden you hear this tico or tica, like say an R like an American. And it, it just is, it's really weird to hear that. So they have this other, I wouldn't call it like a dialect, but like all of the young people, like los jóvenes, they speak what they call pachuco. So it's, it's Spanish, but it's like really fast and they kind of throw in this weird accent. Like, I wish I could give you an example, but I can't because I never could master it. <laughs> um, but it's really funny and it's like fun to listen to, but I can't ever understand them. But yeah, you'll hear a lot of that amongst like maybe 12 to mid 20 year olds. Yeah, but other than that, the, the Spanish there's, it's pretty good. 